Hi, I'm Dr. Tom McClellan, and I'm going to show you part two today of the video, skin sparing mastectomy with immediate reconstruction uh, with a tissue expander and allograft sling. In this part of the video, you'll get to see how we dissect under the pectoralis muscle, how we prepare and inset the allograft material, um, how we prepare the tissue expander and where we place it, and then you'll start to see the importance of keeping the skin during the mastectomy. You'll get to see some post-operative results. And as always, um, thank you for watching the video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email my office. Thank you so much for watching. Here in this cartoon is the allograft sling from the pectoralis major to the inframemory fold on the left. On the right, you'll notice the tissue expander is placed behind the muscle and behind the infralateral sling. On this lateral view, the sling is the white line between the muscle and the inframammary fold, which holds the tissue expander into place. Here is the type of incision that we utilize. It's a lateral curvilinear incision, which hides the scar well. And when compared to traditional mastectomy incision, in the black line is much more aesthetically pleasing and natural. Here we were after the last video with the breast being removed and all of the loose skin left behind. Here we are raising the pectoralis major muscle in order to make room for the tissue expander. This, the pectoralis major muscle, has been released and elevated to make room for the tissue expander and will suture the allograft sling to this muscle. This is alloderm, a cadaveric dermis, and we identify it by placing some blood on the dermal side and allows us to orient it. Here we place it into the body and we trim it to fit in order to form a sling from the pectoralis major muscle to the inframemory fold, which serves to hold the tissue expander. Using a two of vicral stitch in a figure of eight fashion, the allograft is sutured to the pectoralis major muscle starting medially along the pectoralis major muscle in a medial to lateral direction. Once it's sutured to the pe pectoralis major muscle, we'll suture it to the inframemory fold along the inferior side. Here is the allograft sutured to the pectoralis major muscle, and you can start to see the pocket that's being developed. Here, it's been sutured to the inframemory fold, and the lateral part has been left free, but you can start to see the beautiful pocket which has been created in order to hold a tissue expander. This is the tissue expander. We access it with a needle, and you can see this in another video, but we re remove the air from the tissue expander. And now the, all of the air has been removed, and the tissue expander is bathed in an antibiotic solution, and then it's simply rolled up and placed into the body. Here the tissue expander is placed in the lateral part of the pocket and placed into position. And then the lateral part of the allograft sling is sutured down to the chest wall here. And you can see the nice inframemory fold that is formed. This has no saline in it. Afterward, we see the port circled here. And we'll access that with a needle. And then we'll start to insufflate the tissue expander with saline. Here, the tissue expander has been insufflated with a moderate amount of saline. And you can start to see the fullness of the breast developing. Here, insufflation has been completed. And although not fully insufflated, we have a jump on reconstruction. The skin is sutured up over a drain. And drains are typically left in for approximately five to seven days. Once closed, the mastectomy flaps have excellent capillary refill. Here is a final lazy lateral incision versus a traditional incision. As you can see from the anterior-posterior view, 
It is a much more aesthetically pleasing scar and our preferred way to perform skin sparing mastectomy. Once nipple real reconstruction is complete, the result from the preoperative on the left to the postoperative on the right is excellent.